Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, we're going to be looking at the best settings for you to get the highest frame rate possible in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Most of these settings are going to be in-game, and there's a lot of those settings, but there's also some you guys can do on PC before you even launch the game, and NVIDIA, controller settings, etc. We're going to be going over all of that. Before we do that, I'd like to do a big shout-out to the Noti Gang. If you'd like to be featured in the next Noti Gang shout-out, make sure to like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and comment Noti Gang below. Next, we're going to look at our Battle.net launcher, and we're going to do something really easy. And so most people, again, probably have already done this, but go ahead and click on the top left go into settings and if you don't have this selected guys on game launch exit battle.net battle completely if you have this launcher open while your game is up it's going to be drawing resources away and we don't want that okay guys so let's go ahead and have that selected and done so before we jump into the game let's go over some easy graphic settings that you guys can do to help with performance inside of your game we're going to go into our nvidia control panel by right clicking and clicking nvidia if you guys have nvidia which most people do um managing 3d settings make sure of course you enabled your g-sync and all of that um, and a couple of things that'll help with performance is texture filter quality. Um, now you can do max or high performance here. If you have a lower end graphics card, like a 10 series, like 1050, 1080, um, I recommend going performance or high performance here. But if you have like a 2080 super and above, like, a, like I would say 2080 is the minimum. Um, you're gonna have a lot of VRAM space to, to kill. So I think that the game looks a lot better on quality. Uh, so as long as you're not GPU bottlenecking in your benchmarks, you should be okay to run quality. That's what I'm doing. But if you want to eke out as much performance as possible, go with high performance here. Um, and But I'm just going to switch it to quality. And then you can also um, do your power management mode. This is a big one. Prefer maximum performance always here. No matter how powerful your GPU is, you're going to want to prefer max performance here and apply. Next is something I think a lot of people are going to overlook, and that's your graphics settings inside of your PC. So we're just going to go to our Windows Task Manager and just type in graphics settings. This should come up. Now, most people are going to have this checked, I think. But if you don't, then you're in luck because this is going to help out a lot. You're going to hardware accelerate your GPU um, for the things that you have scheduled. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And, uh, and if you're anything like me, you went ahead and did this for the 2019 Modern Warfare, but you probably forgot to do this for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So what you're going to do is you're going to browse and you're going to look for Call of Duty inside of your computer, whereas mine is in this retail folder right here. Yours should be as well. And find the one um, that says COD. It's usually 322,000 kilobytes if you're on Battle.net, and it's a little bit less if you're on Steam. You're going to select that, add that, and we've already had, um, ours is already added. So um, do you go right here. It's going to say like optimal or something like that. Go into options. I think it's let Windows decide. You're going to go to high performance and save that. And that's going to um, allow your GPU to work even harder inside of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now that we've got our settings outside of the game set, let's get our settings inside of Call of Duty wired in. OK, first up, let's go into the interface option and we're going to turn on a couple of things here inside of telemetry. Um, if you don't monitor your stats with MSI or something, you can turn on FPS counter server latency and packet loss like I have if you're on PC. And I highly recommend that you toggle off the parallax effects. These are 3D effects that go on in the menu screens and such, and you don't really need them. And, um, and it just it causes your system and hardware unnecessary stress. You can also turn these off, but I've opted to keep them on because they don't really bother me that much. Now for the most important settings inside of Call of Duty, we're gonna start with the display settings here. Now, if you guys aren't playing on exclusive and if you're a multi-cam gamer, multi-monitor gamer like me, I know it's a bit of an inconvenience to have your monitors flicker, but I tested it and it's not only do you get a lot of input lag um, with full screen borderless, but you, I'm also reporting 15 frame boost inside of full screen exclusive. So I highly recommend that you go with exclusive, set it, forget it, and just get used to it, okay? Uh, make sure to select your screen's refresh rate, mine being 164. Um, of course, my display adapter my GPU is selected and my native resolution as well. So make sure that those are all good to go there. Um, definitely keep VSync off. If you're getting screen tearing and stuff, you can look into it more, but for the vast majority of gamers out there, I would highly recommend turning these uh, VSync's off, okay? I do have custom frame rates here. What I do is I like to mo um, uh, bottleneck the frame rates inside of the menu and out of focus. And then I do a 250 cap. You can set this to your monitor's refresh, but um, I just like, to, I like it to be able to go a little bit higher so that if it starts to like idle, um, it won't idle at or underneath my uh, screen's refresh, but that's personal preference there. Um, and outside of that, just make sure your display gamma, I, I've heard 2.4 is popular, 2.2 stock is pretty good. And after you're done changing any major settings, I do recommend um, restarting your shader optimization. So it's just something to keep in mind inside of your settings that is an option for you to restart them at will. Now let's select the quality tab at the top, and this is going to be a bulk of your settings and the reason why a majority of you guys are here looking for good settings. We're going to have our quality preset set to custom so that we can adjust some things. Um, this should lock out your render resolution if you're anything like me, or I think maybe it's because I have this selected here. 
Um, either way, if this is uh, not, or if this is something that you can adjust, you're gonna be at 100 most of the time. I think it's like 110 or so for uh, 1440p and all that, but I'm, I'm not sure. Mine's locked out because I've selected DLSS. Um, now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, this is probably the first game that's properly utilized NVIDIA DLSS. A majority of people will say that the Fidelity CAS is the way to go. You can run that, do Fidelity CAS, go to 100% upscaling and that's fine. However, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you guys try NVIDIA DLSS, select it and get it to balanced and 100% sharpness. I jumped exactly 20 frames per second uh, uh, myself by doing this. My friends have done it. My people in my stream, twitch.tv slash Josh Barracks, I stream every day, um, have done this and everybody is reporting a frame rate increase. It may not look quite as good as Fidelity CAS, but for performance, NVIDIA DLSS is very good and I highly recommend that you experiment inside of the benchmark testing. That's gonna disable these two uh, automatically for us and I have my video memory select to 85. It has, help, it has helped me with performance. Now, we're just gonna kind of rifle through these. Texture resolution, I've gone with normal. Um, filter anthroscopic, I've gone with low. Nearby level of detail, low. Distant level of detail, low. Now for Warzone 2, you may wanna go high here if everything's looking really grainy and bad from a distance, but for now, select low for the performance. Uh, clutter draw distance is long, does not a big hit on your GPU and you get a lot of benefit from that. Same thing with particle quality being high. This can actually help your frames in the long run. Particle quality level, we selected the very low. Bullets and impacts, I do recommend turning off, but I just like it. Personally, that's just me. Doesn't do a big hit, but it can cause some frame rate issue if there's a lot of effects, um, bullets and sprays in one specific area. Uh, for the shader quality, I've gone with low. Off for the tessellation. Um, this this is really just a quality of life thing. I think that if you have a lot of uh, of, of room um, with your graphic settings, you can go with near and the game's gonna look better. I've just opted to go with off. Terrain memory, I've gone to max. This actually helps. And on-demand textures and streaming, always, always, always off, at least for this game. Streaming quality low, volumetric quality low, deferred physics quality low, water caustics, uh, caustics off as well there. That's easy peasy. Now a shadow map, I do recommend normal because you can actually, uh, uh, it will separate things that are inside of shadows. It'll actually help you with your gameplay and it's not at a huge cost um, to your GPU either. So I've gone with normal there. Screen space shadows being off, spot shot quality, uh, shadow quality uh, low, spot sh uh, cache is low, particle quality low, ambient occlusion off as well. And that's pretty much gonna be the theme going all the way down, right? Off, low, low, NVIDIA low latency, I have on. Now this, I wanna take a second to talk about this. Um, so you can go inside of the benchmark with all your settings being the same and try a test on off, on, and on plus boost. This, a lot of the times is gonna be dependent on your graphics card. Um, I lose seven frames going from on to on plus boost. And um, I, I, you still get that latency benefit from it just being on. So a lot of people have been up, uh, opting to go with on or off, and I'm seeing a lot less people go with on plus boost. This is probably something that we'll know more about as time goes on. But as of right now, if you wanna be safe and still have the benefit of uh, NVIDIA reflex low latency, but not have a hit to your FPS, I do recommend going on for the time being. Get the field off, 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 and zero. Those, this is a big one. Turn off the fill grain, guys. It's really annoying to look at. And finally, for the view on the graphic settings, we're gonna go field of view is all personal preference. I select 105 because I'm weird and a lot of people are gonna go 120, okay? So I definitely recommend if you guys are on 60 still or 80, let's crank that up. It's gonna help your gameplay a lot. ADS field of view, if you're on independent, don't do that. Go with affected. It's gonna make um, when you're ADS, it's just a lot easier to, to see everything around you. Weapon field of view, this is a kind of a split in the community. Um, wide is gonna make your guns look better and good for thumbnails, but you're gonna block a lot of your screen. So I've gone with narrow and it kind of gives me a little bit more room. I think it was um, Crim6 who tested this and showed how much more of the game you see when you have narrow selected. So I recommend that. Everything else is pretty easy. I think go with least if you guys are on first person camera movement, least at 50, just keep keeping these down is the best way to go. And you can just kind of see what I have here. And like I said, most of it's personal preference. For the audio settings, we've kind of kept it basic. I go with headphones. Some people have been saying to use the headphone bass boost, but in this game, at least so far, the footsteps are pretty much non-existent. So I've just kind of kept it basic with the headphones. And then of course, this is gonna be per system. Um, I would just recommend as loud as possible without, you know, breaking your uh, bre breaking your hearing. Okay, so I've just mine's pretty much as loud as can be that I can take it, just so I can hear any little thing. I have my music turned all the way off um, because it's unnecessary. And then otherwise, I think this is pretty much standard, pretty much basic. I, I'm going to switch my voice chat device over to Elgato. That's a streamer thing. Don't worry about it. Otherwise, everything is pretty pretty much standard. And finally, for controller settings, now there's a shockingly large amount of controller settings that we are gonna be looking at. 
um, but they're pretty basic. I use default here for the button layout because I have paddles on the back. Um, if you guys aren't already, I would just do like bumper jumper. If you don't have paddles, you don't want to be taking your thumb off of the um, right stick to be jumping. If you guys can do bumper jumper to use your finger or of course paddles is kind of the way uh, to go. If you guys need a controller for the low, low, uh, I am a power a partner. You guys can use code barracks to check out for 5% off of power and controllers, which are already very affordable plug over. Okay, uh, turn your controller vibration off, super unnecessary. I've gone with a high seven um, with no sensitivity multiplier because um, I just, you know, if you want, you can lower your sensitivity when you ADS, but uh, in this game, I've opted not to do that because it's just, it just works better for your brain if you can get used to it. So that, again, this is just personal preference. The lower sensitivity is usually the better for hitting your shots though, just keep that in mind. Um, everything else is pretty standard. Oh, armor plate behavior. You want to go to apply all instead of apply one. That way you can just hold down triangle and uh, or your paddle and automatically apply all your plates instead of having to do them one by one. That's very annoying. Everything else I have kept um, pretty standard automatic sprint. I actually turned off. This is different from Modern Warfare 2019 with the lack of slide canceling and how slower, how much slower this game plays. I found that I would rather just have the option to walk in ADS or walk in hip fire. Uh, than to constantly be um, automatic tag sprinting. So I have that off. And I think if we go into advanced controller settings, we, we can actually do um, something specific to that automatic sprint that's going to help us be a little bit more mobile. Now to go over to our advanced settings, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to make sure we have toggled on. Target aim assist, of course, it's going to come out of the box on. Keep that on if you want to hit any amount of shots with controller. Aim assist type, we've gone with Black Ops. Right now, Black Ops is reporting to be the stickiest of all the aim assists. So if that changes, we'll make another VA, uh, a video. But until that does, Black Ops is the way to go. Um, all of this is standard and out of the box. I haven't changed any of that. Aim response curve, always do dynamic, guys. This is just going to make it a ton easier um, to just see targets and hit targets. And it's just the best way to go. So go with dynamic. That's what the pro use pros use so do it yourself um i do want to show you something with input dead zones with the left and right triggers i've gone to all uh, all the way down to zero and basically what that does is it, is it gives you the lowest point of when you pull your trigger on your controller for it to activate and do what it's intended to do so instead of having to pull your trigger all the way down if you have those to zero it'll have like a little bit like a, a, a hair trigger it'll start your shot or your ads sooner if these are both at double zero so that's what i've done um, now, here is where I told you earlier that there was something that helps with movement outside of just automatic tax, tax sprint. Um, single tap run. And what that's going to do is as soon as we tap our sprint button and push that in, it is going to automatically make our character go into um, sprint uh, uh, tax uh, sprint. So that's what we've done. And uh, in that way, I don't have to like press it twice to do a tax sprint, but I'm not automatically tax sprinting if that makes sense. So that's what I would do. Everything else is standard. I have turned off parachute auto deploy. Just kidding. So I would recommend turning that off just like in Warzone 1. And uh, other than that, let me see if anything else was changed here. I don't believe it was. And that's it, guys. That's going to be it for our controller settings and our video in its entirety. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video and this helps you at all, please make sure to like the video and subscribe. We'll have more content coming with Warzone 2. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.